How are you? And welcome to the conversation right here on a Desert Radio. My name is Kelvin Chiringa. Would like to start off on Nangolo Mbumba. Our president Nangolo Mbumba joined the Southwest Africa People's Organization or the Swapo Party before independence as a young man and has been involved in politics ever since. He has headed a number of Namibian government ministries, including the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Rural Development between 1993 and 1996. He was the Minister of Finance between 1996 and 2003 and Minister of Information and Broadcasting from 2003 to 2005. Uh, we then saw him as Minister of Education from 2005 until 2010 and Safety and Security Minister from 2010 to 2012. And uh, Mbumba took over administration at a party uh, level from 2012 to 2017 when he was the Secretary General of the party. He was appointed Vice President of Namibia in 2018 to replace Nick Iyambo. Today, Mbumba is Namibia's fourth head of state. He serves on an interim capacity, yet is expected to make decisions fully as president. After nine years of a Gengob administration characterized by the Harambe vision and green hydrogen drive, what can we expect from the next 12 months of the Mbumba administration? The question that we want to tackle right here on the program, we are joined by Dr. Ndumba Kamwanya, a political scientist and public policy analyst, as well as Professor Henning Melba. Uh, he is a known researcher as well as a political commentator on matters to do with Africa and Namibia as well. And we shall be shortly joined by Professor Jacob Nyambe, an, ac an academician right here in the Republic of Namibia. Uh, just to greet our guests there, Dr. Ndumba Kamwanya, good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon, Kevin. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, good afternoon, uh, Henning. That's right. We do welcome the same you. To me. Good afternoon, Kevin. Good afternoon, Dumba. And good afternoon, all the listeners. That's right. And gentlemen, uh, for the next few minutes, we shall be taking a look at what we can expect from the Mbumba administration. He is uh, the interim president at this point. Of course, a conspiracy of fate required that uh, he be uh, then uh, put in place as uh, the president of the Republic of Namibia. And uh, we saw him this week, gentlemen, uh, opening cabinet, and he talked about Namibia entering a dispensation of economic boom. And he was talking about uh, we shall be fighting corruption and that cabinet ministry ministers must now kick the ball and, of course, kick the ground running and deliver there. Uh, Professor Melba, I would like to start with you there. What can we really expect from Boomba? Are we going to expect anything much economically, social progress, or he's just going to be the man who just be there, who just be there to make sure the transition is necessitated? I think the best we can expect, and I trust that is also what we will expect and he will deliver, is continuity, stability, and administering for the one year plus one month uh, delivery of parts of the vision of the late President Hage Geinkorp. Bumba has always been um, a very loyal servant to principles, to an administrative framework. He was never an outlier, and I think this will also define his one year in the office. As you mentioned, he was the finance minister for seven years, from 1996 to 2003. And as far as I remember and reconstruct, he didn't rock the boat then. So I'm very sure his top priority will be not to rock the boat now. That's right. And uh, one of the hallmarks of a leader is firmness. I don't know whether the track record of uh, uh, our president right now shows a man who is firm uh, to whip the cabinet bureaucracy into line and deliver there. But before I can put this question over to you, Dr. Kamwanya, I'd like to welcome uh, Professor J.M. Nyambe just joining us there. Professor, good afternoon. Hello, Professor. Can you hear us? All right, we'll try to see if we can reconnect with Professor Nyambe there. I'd like to come to you there, Dr. Kamwanya. Does Dumba have the political stamina, really, and the feminists to get these cabinet ministers into line and deliver? Uh, I mean, uh, taking a look at what he said when he opened cabinet to say that I expect you guys to redouble your efforts and deliver because so much needs to be done. Uh, uh, thank you, Kevin. Um... I don't know whether he has the stamina or not, but uh, we have to take him on his own word. 
that he is a caretaker president uh, from now up to the swearing in of the next uh, uh, president. So we shouldn't expect much in terms of policy changes and policy uh, direction. So that's why I want to agree with uh, 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 Henning Melba there, the aspect of uh, uh, continuity. Uh, what we are going to see uh, him doing is probably uh, stressing the importance of uh, implementing uh, policies and programs that are already uh, in place. Uh, you know, the NDP-5, the you know, Harambe Prosperity Plan, the, um, uh, the uh, Green Hydrogen. Uh, so we'll see him maybe adding uh, his ministers uh, to work hard and to ensure that uh, uh, it is implemented. But we should not expect much in terms of uh, a clear diversion from um, uh, his uh, predecessor. That's right. Uh, Professor Nyambe, I don't know if you can hear us at this point. All right. Seems like we're still struggling there with, uh, okay, he's connecting his audio. Uh, Professor, if you can hear us. Good afternoon, Professor. If you can just unmute your mic. All right. Okay, my team will just speak with him uh, behind the scenes there. Uh, Professor uh, Melba, um, if we take a look at the track record of uh, Nangolo Mbumba, what does it tell us in terms of uh, whether he is an incorruptible uh, a government official? I mean, he has held so many portfolios. But maybe before I can put this question to you, let me see if our professor is still with us. Professor Nyambe, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kevin. How are you? Doing very well. We're having trouble connecting you there, but of course we are now connected. I would like to welcome you, Professor Nyambe, to the conversation. Good afternoon once again. And uh, I do have uh, Professor Melba and I do have Dr. Ndumba Kangwanya on the line. Thank you. That's right. What Good afternoon, afternoon Prof. Good afternoon, uh, Doc. <laughs> Good afternoon, Prof. Melba. Good afternoon. Nice meeting you, if only on air. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's right, gentlemen. Yes, the question that I have for you there, uh, Professor Milber, does Mbumba have an incorruptible, does he have a, a track record and background of being an incorruptible official? I, we want to take a look at how serious he's going to be fighting corruption in the next few months. I did have a look at his track record and I only came across one incident where there was a shadow of doubt cast it without any further reliable evidence. That was many, many years ago when it came to the allocation of fishing quota. One of those self-help uh, dish outs which were part of the governance since Namibia, so, so to say, nationalized the fishing, meaning also privatized the fishing industry. But that was the only tiny, tiny dent. And as I, as I said, it was not supplied with sufficient evidence. And otherwise, I have not come across any incident where there would have been some suspicion or accusation when it comes to Nangolo concerning his integrity and his um, proper performance in office. And if I may add to the question you discussed uh, just now with Dumba concerning his personality, Nangolo is a gentle man, meaning he is a very soft speaking person. That's a contrast to Hage. It's also a contrast to Tatekulu Semnuyoma. He more has the personality of Hifikeponye Pohamba. That does not mean that he necessarily is not having the power to influence people to follow instructions. Notably, he already made some very clear statements addressing members of cabinet what he expects them from doing. Now the proof is in eating the pudding. It's too early to judge if it has any impact. But it's notable that he made already so early in his um, transactional period in, in terms uh, that public appeal to the ministers in cabinet.
That's right, uh, Professor Anyambe, if I, can, if I can bring you in there, uh, what can we expect really from uh, President Bumba there? Should we really have high expectations or we should rather look beyond? Uh, thank you. I take it that you can hear me properly. That's right. Yeah, I, I think uh, President Bumba is someone who is um, capable, he's firm. Someone is upright, I think I could get with uh, Prof. Melba. Um, I think the expectation is that he should, I mean, he's he's going to uh, to maintain what was left and just see to it that delivery takes place. Um, I don't think with the little time that is left, including the time to campaign uh, in the country, that there will be major projects. I think it will be a matter of implementing what is there right. and see everything goes to fruition. Thank you. That's right. And uh, if I should just make use of this analogy there for you, uh, Dr. Ndumba, um, our president is more or less driving a vehicle with the same old engine. He's just taking over the administration of President Hage Genkop. Just minor changes really that he has made, necessitated by, of course, uh, the rise to the helm of vice presidency by Netumbo Nandidaitwa there. When it comes to fighting corruption, making use of the systems that are already in existence, systems that have been severely criticized even when Hage Genkop was around, can we really expect uh, 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 the President Bumba to be successful when it comes to fighting corruption? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, so much of what is going to happen uh, in terms of uh, Mumba's governance, we have to wait uh, for the 28th of uh, February, uh, which I think the day the budget will be um, uh, tabled. So from how that budget uh, allocation will look like, maybe we can make conclusions in terms of what he is going to uh, focus on, uh, including uh, co corruption. Uh, so really, I have a little doubt, and this is also because of the time frame uh, from now to the next uh, uh, transition, uh, that um, uh, he will be that successful uh, to uh, uh, tackle corruption, uh, partly because of the time frame, and uh, partly I think uh, he is uh, not um, uh, uh, a confrontational person. Uh, he's more of a listener uh, and uh, more of trying to uh, follow the processes. So he might uh, end up not really intervening uh, forcefully uh, uh, to that extent that uh, we will see a major shape up in terms of uh, 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 fighting corruption. So I doubt that uh, we will see changes uh, in terms of how uh, those institutions entrusted with uh, fighting corruption uh, will um, uh, uh, implement or deliver. I think we will see the same delivery as it was. Kevin, if you are Allow me to chip in because I think it's an important point you raised and just also confirmed by Ndumba. I like the picture you used. Um, Nangolo has taken over a vehicle with the same old engine, and I should add with the same old wheels. They are not changed. Right. And we should be careful while we offer him the integrity and trust he deserves to expect too much from him. It's not individuals on the commanding heights. It's the boat that matters right. and those who are rowing the boat, meaning he has to rely on strong institutions and committed, competent civil servants who follow the principles that are issued as a program for good governance. And as we know from the past, there is a discrepancy between what has been claimed as a vision and what has been delivered or rather not delivered. Nangola will in the one year he has not bridge that gap. Right.
That's right. Uh, Professor, I hear you there. Um, yes, and if you're just tuning in right now, you are listening to the conversation right here on uh, Desert Radio, where we are breaking bread around what we expect from the Mbumba administration. We are in conversation with Professor Henning Melba all the way from Deutschland or Germany, as well as uh, Professor Nyambe from the University of Namibia and Dr. Ndumba Kamwanya, their public policy analyst right here in Namibia from the University of Namibia as well. I would like to come to you uh, a little bit later with the question of uh, what you think about uh, Nangolo Mumba's decision not to contest the upcoming presidential elections. But uh, that's uh, Dr. Um, uh, and, uh, Kamwanya there. But uh, for you, uh, Professor Nyambe, the smooth transition that we have experienced and power being handed over to the Vice President Nangolo Mbumba and him picking up Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa to be his Vice President and then saying that I won't contest the next elections. What is the impact of all those political dynamics and developments, especially when it comes to investor sentiment? Okay. Uh, is it me? If you can unmute your mic. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. You can proceed. Uh, okay. No, I think with regards to the smooth transition, it's something that is uh, celebrated, if I'll put it like that. Uh, there may be some other issues, maybe some people may be concerned with in some corners. But realistically, that is a very good recipe for any investor. Uh, because it, it shows that the country is stable, which is one of the requirements of any investor to consider uh, hosting their assets in such a country. Um, it's also important to think about the long-term implications of democratic processes. So anyone would say, yes, that was wonderful, and uh, how he brought in the vice president is also commendable. Um, what will happen in future is a different issue altogether. But him announcing that he is not going to be available for any contestation around the elections, it's a clear signal that he is not coming to be a candidate to rock the board within Swapo, and is not someone who whom they should look up to and say he's going to bring some stiff competition here and there. No, he's someone who is simply reflecting that I'm taking you through this stage the unfortunate situation, I'm a leader to trust, and I'm not going to change in terms of what I'm, what I'm going to do. Um, I think it also shows that there's confidence within the party itself in terms of um, uh, cadres that they have, uh, that should take over at any time, but also it's a way of preparing the vice president currently in the party right. uh, to be prepared to lead in some cases in, in areas where there is need going into the elections. Thank you. That's right. Uh, uh, Dr. Dumba, uh, the very fact that Netubo Nadidaitwa has been given the position of vice president, is it uh, a, a signal that the SWAPO party is sending to us to say we are already now starting to prepare her and she's testing the water with one leg? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, Yes, uh, the fact that Natumbo Nandi Ndaitwa is already the uh, nominated uh, presidential candidate for the party, and I would like to think that um, the elevation to the vice president of the country uh, in one or another way is a message uh, that uh, that is the uh, pa the candidates, the Swapo party is uh, consolidating around uh, to be the candidate for the national uh, uh, elections. So it, it, it sent a strong uh, message for those that are also thinking that maybe uh, this is uh, an, an opportunity uh, for them when they go uh, to the extraordinary congress to elect the party president, maybe they can throw in their uh, their head. But uh, having said that, uh, this issue is not yet resolved. Right. Uh, we might see more uh, as we uh, uh, inch uh, closer to the so-called uh, uh, extraordinary election uh, because there is tension. 
uh, it's just because that at this moment that tension is not uh, uh, coming out strongly because we are still in the morning uh, period. But after the morning period, uh, uh, we might see some frictions uh, around the uh, uh, presidential candidate uh, for the party and eventually for the national election. That's right. Uh, Professor Milba, has the job been cut out for the delegates uh, for the upcoming Extraordinary Congress to say, look, nowhere else but our vice president in the government there should be our candidate? I assume that is the signal that uh, Nangola Bumba wanted to be taken note of when he immediately after his inauguration swore in Triple N as uh, his vice president. And I think the worst case scenario from a point of view of Swapo would be at this moment of time to reopen a party internal power struggle. It's not that we are uh, at the beginning of the campaign. Triple N has started her campaign already early this year, actually late last year. If you follow her postings uh, on X, the previous Twitter, it's very obvious there is a team in place campaigning for the election of Nandi Daitwa as the next president of Namibia in November of this year. To revert that decision, I think, would be catastrophic. And not only in terms of the party internal divisions, but also, as Prof. Nyambe has uh, already stressed, foreign observers and potential investors look very carefully as regards political stability in a country which they consider as a potential investment opportunity. Right. If that political stability is at risk, they will think twice if they make a decision in favor of investing their money in such a country. So there are multiple layers that come along. And if Swapo now reopens a debate which was actually closed, which Bumba tried to confirm with the appointment, it will be not good for the party, nor will it good be good for governance generally and not good for the investors' climate. That's right. And we know that uh, the loyalty lines tend to shift a little bit, especially as we enter a period of transition. Uh, Netsubo Nadi Daitwa did, ho- uh, did hold or does uh, hold the political center of gravity. She was holding that political center of gravity when Hagi Genkop was around. And with Nangolo Mbumba to the helm, is it the f- same situation? Professor Nyambe, I want to bring you in there. Uh, is it a situation where the vice president holds the political center of gravity as opposed to the president, considering the fact that the vice president seems to be the future and uh, the president is not going to be part of this contest. Yes, I I fully concur. Um, You you see, it would have been somehow confusing had the president currently indicated that he would be available or just to remain mute. But I think now the powers are within the hands of the current vice president. Reasons being that uh, she's already the only person who is going to remain in the current government, if we were to think about it, of course it's going to dissolve, but I'm talking about the potential to go further. Uh, She will remain, but at the same time, she's already filling up a very critical position in the ruling party. Uh, The president is just someone who is taking the country through the difficult time, but he said he's not going to be available. So, it remains to be seen on how the party itself will deal with the internal dynamics. But she has already stood the test of time, availing herself, in other words, as, as the other commentators have said. Uh, I, I think that was uh, very clear with uh, Prof. Melba. So it, it's, just a, it's just a matter of when we start seeing things happen within the party itself. But on the front itself, she's, I think, 
the one who is going to call the shots. Thank you. That's right. Uh, very succinctly put there. The time is 1.42 p.m. right here on the conversation. You are listening to Desert Radio. We are with uh, Professor Jacob Nyambe there and Professor Henning Melba and Dr. Ndumba Kangwanya as we break bread around the Mbumba administration. Where exactly can this administration take us politically, socially? Uh, and I would like to come to you there, Dr. Uh, Kangwanya, uh, in terms of uh, the moving of the chess pieces in the uh, transition that we just experienced there, we saw Mbumba picking up Emma Theophilus to be the uh, substantive Minister of Information. Is this another sign that the Swapo Party, after the elections of November and beyond March 2025, is a party that is preparing to reinvent itself? Uh, well, I will not say that... Uh... The move uh, uh, that uh, uh, Mbumba made uh, to fill the vacant position is uh, somehow a, a reinvention. Uh, I think uh, you can still read it within the uh, legacy uh, uh, and the continuity. Uh, but important also to remember that uh, Mbumba is playing very uh, carefully. Uh, this is simply because uh, that uh, even intermediary uh, presidents, uh, they think about their own legacy during the transition. And I think he is at that uh, space that he has to trade very carefully so that he does not uh, make moves that might uh, create uh, further uh, uh, divisions. Uh, within the party or uh, uh, at the government uh, level. So from that perspective, I think uh, uh, he settled uh, for what he think that it will be appealing uh, for many uh, uh, at the party level uh, and also for uh, the, uh, 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 in the administration. So that's why you see the move for John Mtorwa you see the move for uh, Theophilus, uh, as well as uh, Mushelenga. Uh, and uh, uh, mainly those people are not surrounded by controversies. They are not divisive, so they can appeal to the larger uh, 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 support base of the party, but also uh, the country and the, and the government level. That's right. Uh, Professor Melba, I want to come back to you there. Does Mbumba have the gravitas to leave behind a legacy, seeing that he is operating within the shadow of uh, the administration of Hage Gengop without really being very bullish and very, uh, without being very radical there? Can he leave a legacy for Namibia? If President Bumba manages, which I hope, to steer the wheel and keep the boat on course, and with the boat in this case, I don't mean the party, I mean the country, then that is sufficient legacy. He can look back when he retires next year, 83 years of age, the same age as Tate Hage Geingob, as Olmos. So, um, he can look back at a remarkable career, not only having stood in for one year for the sad circumstances we are witnessing, but he was the one who was decisive in the reintegration process of Wallfish Bay. That's how he started to leave a mark. And then the list you read out at the beginning of this program of the ministries and portfolios he covered, shows actually that we, he will be on record as a very committed servant, not only to the party, that started long before independence, but also to the country and the people. And he has never, to my knowledge, been involved in any uh, party internal power struggles. He has never stood out to score cheap points at the expenses of others. Now, if that is the legacy with which you enter the history books, I think there are worse examples. That's right. Uh, Professor Nyambe, if I can bring you in there, can we really at some point sit and uh, say we are discussing the legacy of... Uh... Uh, Nangolo Mbumba, given the fact that he's operating under the shadow of the previous president? Oh, definitely. Uh, 
I think rising to such an office does not only carry one's historical achievements. It has also a lot to do with what lies ahead. So what is in sight currently is the implementation of projects that came already from the former president, right. uh, the late president. In other words, um, he will have to demonstrate, uh, bring them on board. He will have to demonstrate on the aspect of stability. He will have to demonstrate on the assistance to carry the country through its elections. He will have to demonstrate the ability to manage governance from across all sectors. He has to demonstrate on the international sphere that he's the president of the country. And he has to pull all others through in terms of his cabinet to deliver on some of the policies that are left currently and those that are to come. So, in other words, stability and all that it requires, including taking the country into the next phase, I think that will will be seen as some of his achievements. Thank you. That's right. Uh, yes, uh, the time is 1.48 p.m. We are slowly uh, really driving this ship all the way to 2 o'clock where we shall dock it. And we are talking about uh, Nangolo Mumba and his administration. Uh, Dr. Ndumba, if I can bring you in there, um, what are some of the low-hanging fruits, really, for Ndumba Kangwanya? If he, I mean, for Professor um, Nangolo Mbumba, if he is to deliver, uh, if he is to really see the completion of what Hage Gengob uh, started, what are the low-hanging fruits? What is he supposed to go for quickly? Uh, well, um, as I already uh, mentioned, that uh, programs and uh, projects. Uh, are already there. Development, uh, I think we are now at uh, uh, a six or still at five. I'm not sure whether the six is um, a f- or formally um, uh, uh, started. Uh, we have the uh, Harambe Prosperity Plan. Uh, we have the Green Hydrogen. And we know that the late president uh, was a, a staunch uh, uh, a champion for the green hydrogen. Uh, so we might see him uh, focus uh, on some of those initiatives uh, to make sure that uh, uh, at least they uh, uh, come through. Uh, yeah, uh, you see, uh, I think uh, one of the, uh, uh, the aspects that he will probably focus more carefully is really to make sure that uh, from where we are today up to the next transitions, that uh, things will happen smoothly, peacefully, and that uh, that transition to the next president, whether uh, it will be Netumbo Ndaito if she wins, uh, or somebody else, that it take place uh, uh, in a more peaceful manner. And that also, to, to in extent, it will be uh, his legacy. That's right. Uh, Kevin, if you yes. allow me, I would like to add one thing before we uh, end the conversation um, without mentioning it. Right. I'm very curious to see how President Bumba will handle the stagnating bilateral negotiations with Germany on the so-called joint agreement or reconciliation agreement. Because as we know, with the rift between Namibia and Germany over the Israeli genocidal warfare in the Gaza, one of the last statements of uh, uh, Hage Geingob, um, it was questionable if under those conditions, uh, Namibia would still be willing to enter a bilateral agreement, which was in any case a negotiated compromise and is still rejected by the main agencies of the Ovaherero and Nama, and to some extent the Damara. And Nangolo Bumba was officially, as vice president of the country, in charge of supervising the negotiations. And he tried in vain in late 2022 to take the Ovaherero and Nama agencies of OTA and NTLA on board, which they refused. And he also expressed on various occasions his dissatisfaction with the negotiated result. So he has one year to make up his mind if he goes ahead and signs 
the bilateral government to government uh, joint declaration where Namibia is not satisfied with, or if he uses the moment in time to put it finally on hold and say, let's restart the whole process and maybe let's learn from the mistakes we did and bring in the main agencies of the Ova Herero and the Nama. It might be wishful thinking, but I would very much hope that we can witness something like that. And that at least would, in this specific aspect, be a total game changer. That's right. Uh, yes, uh, Kevin. Yes, uh, uh, Doctor, you can come in. Yeah, just to add uh, one more aspect, and I agree with uh, 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 Henning Melba there. Uh, uh, so one of the projects that probably likely uh, going to be realized uh, you remember that the late uh, promise uh, to elevate the old edge uh, grant, uh, I think that um, most likely uh, he might uh, push to ensure that that uh, 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 dream is realized, just as an addition. That's right. It looks like an unwritten will of uh, the now deceased president. It was his hope and wishes. And in the African culture, we do have uh, the aptitude of respecting the wishes of the dead. We hope it's going to be playing out. But I would like to bring you in, uh, Professor Nyambe. Uh, Professor Henning Melba said Nangolo Mbumba is not here to rock the boat. As part of not rocking the boat, is it advisable for him to keep the advisors that were advising President Hage Gengob in place and to allow these guys to advise him for the next year? Or should he reshuffle that? I'm now talking in thinking of uh, the likes of the hydrogen acolytes like uh, James Moyupe. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't see any relevance of reshuffling people. Um, I, th I think the whole the whole issue is that um, the president has just to manage the transition. Right. You don't change people because by simply doing such, you are bringing people for a very short term again, because soon again there'll be a new president. It's better to keep the status quo and continue to drive from behind to ensure that delivery takes place. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Professor. Uh, doctor, would you want to respond to that? C can Should the president change his advisors or he can continue with them? Um, uh, I, I think that it's unlikely to happen uh, that he will do so uh, because of the um, uh, the time frame again, uh, just like what uh, Prof. Nyambe uh, said there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is a very tricky situation uh, in the sense that uh, the presidential advisors are more private uh, to the president uh, himself. So uh, other dynamic issues come into play uh, in terms of uh, how uh, Mbumba will work with them, uh, how Mbumba will take their advice, and uh, what he would like to see uh, them advise on. So, uh, so he has to navigate those uh, dynamics, but I don't think that uh, we will see him change uh, the economic, uh, the presidential advisor team uh, at this moment. That's right. I bring the same question to you, uh, Professor Melba. I think that's exactly the point. He will not uh, create any commotion. So that means it's unlikely he remove them because that would create potential unrest. The big question is to what extent do you listen to advisors you inherit? He's not yes. forced to listen to them. So he keeps them in office, they get their salary, and he just looks for other advice he would prefer. So that's something to be weighed and seen. And referring to this uh, ambitious announcement of, of uh, late President Geingob with the um, huge increase of old age pun uh, pension, keep in mind we are in an election year. And one of the tricky issues President Bumba is facing is to walk a very thin line between dishing out gifts to the electorate and maintaining fiscal prudence, which is one of the most urgent demands under the current circumstances. So it's, again, a little bit of a wait and see. And I don't envy him 
to walk that thin line because it will be very, very tricky. That's right, uh, Professor. We are coming to the close of our conversation. Uh, three minutes to go to two o'clock there. I would like to thank you, Professor, for being part and parcel of this conversation. Professor Nyambe, I come to you and also put my hands together. Uh, Dr. Nduba Kamwanya always being there for us when we want your uh, expert opinion on uh, the political and economic uh, developments here in Namibia. Gentlemen, we do appreciate you for being part and parcel of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It was a privilege to be engaged with all these uh, noble and sophisticated persons. Thank you very much. Uh, likewise, Prof. And uh, Prof. Yam as well. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Prof. Thank you Thank so you, much, Kevin. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And do you have a productive day ahead of you? We are, of course, at the very uh, cusp of our program right here. You are listening to The Conversation. My name is Kelvin Chiringa. We start every Thursday from quarter past one o'clock until two o'clock, breaking bread on many topical issues that are at the center of our national consciousness. There, we were talking about what to expect from the Mumba administration, an administration that arises as a result of the conspiracy of FET that saw now the demise of our president. That's our president, Hagen. And of course, some have said that Nangolo Mbumba is a beneficiary of FET because when he became the vice president, it was on account of the death of Nikki Yambo. Now that rising to the helm as the president of the country, it's on account of death once again knocking on the door of State House. Such is life. But of course, at the back of all this is uh, the health of the state, equally now set on the shoulders of a president Nangolo Mbumba. What can he do in the next uh, few uh, months there before he can hand over the button to the substantive full time president who shall be the result? of the democratic uh, uh, play out that shall play uh, in November this year, 2024. Thank you so much for coming through. My name is Kelvin Chiringa. This is The Conversation. Continue to stay tuned to Desert Radio. Oh,